Video Gathering, Beginner to 2000 Mastery Guide. Hey there, Heaven here. It's pretty amazing for me that you're able to watch this. After weeks of planning out the storyboard, writing the contents and recording the scenes, it feels surreal to be speaking the welcome section for the introduction. In March 2020, I decided to rush for 2000 Gathering Mastery and quickly got overwhelmed with all the griefing and toxicity at Bear, practically the only spot where Gather is power level in BDO. I spent some time looking for a way out and found one, and I'm about to share it with you. This is a guide that respects your time and intelligence. A lot of guys out there only tell you about the absolute basics, thinking you can't keep up with advanced information and tactics. I have complete faith in you, so I will teach you everything you need to know to reach the highest gathering proficiency at 2000 Mastery in the most accessible way possible, no matter if you're already in the middle of that journey or just starting out. I'll share a distance gathering technique that is little known among beginners and will save you dozens of hours over your lifetime of playing BDO. And I'll show you my secret spot where I power leveled my gathering from the lower master levels all the way to Guru 28. With an efficient rotation, that spot is on par with Bear. You can go there and have a peaceful time gathering. Even if this video should become popular and the new location with it, this is still better than having the entire gathering community compete for 10 meters of herbs in one little village of Calpheon. But first things first. How does gathering work? With gathering, you convert energy into materials you can sell on the marketplace for silver or use yourself in cooking, alchemy, processing or workshops. Gathering your own materials tax-free synergizes particularly well with other life skills. Gathering does not require or interact in any way with loot scrolls, so if you ever find yourself running low on these, you can switch to gathering and save some loot scrolls. If your mastery is maxed out at 2000, the silver you make from gathering is on par with some of the best grind spots currently in the game. If you don't know what mastery is, don't worry, we will get to that in a moment. But first I want to give you an overview on the different things you can gather. There are really a lot of materials you can gather in BDO. I listed some of the less obscure ones here to compare them in terms of silver and experience. The horizontal axis shows you how much silver per hour you can make from gathering the materials and the vertical axis is telling you how much gathering experience you can get per hour. Tanning animals for feathers and hides only gives you little gathering experience and little silver because there aren't many uses for them in the game. Getting a tanning knife is very low priority. You probably shouldn't be tanning unless you know exactly what you're doing. Meat and blood are cash materials. They generate a lot of silver but little gathering experience. They are the best source of hards, sharps and black gem fragments in the game, which are materials for enhancing. You need a butchering knife for meat and a fluid collector for blood. I recommend gathering meat for silver once you've increased your gathering mastery a bit. Wood and saps aren't quite as much silver because their market prices are lower on average. But they are the best source of Kafra stones and ancient spirit dust in the game, items you'll need later on. And they generate more experience than the materials from before. Still not a lot though. It's probably best not to focus on lumbering and sapping for now if you are a beginner. Rathstone is in a similar position as wood and saps in terms of silver per hour, but mining it generates a good amount of gathering experience. If you are making something nice with the Rathstone, like cooking or alchemy utensils, or a metal solvent and pure crystals, investing into a pickaxe relatively early on is a decent option if you want both experience and silver. Herbs are by far the best, easily available source of gathering experience in the game, and therefore at the very top of the chart. It is well worth for feeding a bit of silver in the beginning to level up your gathering and make some more silver in the long term. I'll show you a really good rotation for herb gathering very soon, but let's establish some goals first. If you're new to gathering, you should pick up a hoe and go power leveling, at least until you are master one. This is because each time you perform gathering, you have a chance of losing energy. But, the higher your gathering level is, the more it reduces your chance of losing energy. As soon as you're master 1, the chance of losing energy is at its lowest possible level, so you're the most energy efficient you can be. Being efficient with energy is really important, especially for new players who don't have much of it yet. That's why your goal should be to reach master 1 gathering as quickly as possible. 
I'll soon make a guide on how to increase your maximum energy and link it under this video. You can subscribe and click the bell if you don't want to miss it. Know that leveling your gathering to Master 1 will also increase your mastery. I believe it is time to talk about mastery now. Press P in game, open the life skill tab and click on learn more. This opens an overview on your mastery. Mastery is simply a number between 0 and 2000 that describes how efficient you are at a life skill. You can have more than 2000 mastery, but past 2000 you get no benefits from going higher. The type of efficiency bonus you get from mastery differs for each life skill. Gathering mastery is very easy to understand. For each 50 additional mastery you get, you will drop more materials and rare items from gathering on average. Only intervals of 50 count. If your mastery ends on 45, for example, you will have to push for that 5 missing mastery to unlock the next benefit. There is actually a lot of misinformation about gathering mastery. Some people look at mastery tables and search for fancy numbers like plus 100% this, plus 100% that, and believe that the corresponding mastery value on the left is a big game changer. Others look at loot logs and notice that at 750, 1250 and 1650 mastery, the maximum stack size of materials increases to 12, 16 and 20 while gathering respectively. But the truth is, there are no visible breakpoints. Higher brackets generate slightly more extra income than lower brackets, but of course, they are also harder to unlock. To quantify the efficiency gain, let's assume you're gathering wolf meat. Your very first bracket from 650 to 700 mastery will increase your silver per hour by about 4 million. Your very last bracket from 1950 to 2000 mastery will increase your silver per hour by about 11 million. And an average bracket somewhere in the middle of your progression should be about 7 million silver per hour extra. For other types of gathering, the mastery increase per bracket may be similar or less. Now that you learned about mastery, you probably want to know how to increase it. For each gathering level you gain, you get 5 extra mastery. At Master 1, for example, your mastery from gathering levels alone, this number, will be at 255. Past Guru 20, you get 10 extra mastery instead per level. Once you are Guru 28, you are in a really comfortable spot. But gathering levels are not the only thing that increases mastery. There are mastery clothes, accessories and tools as well. The clothes are called Logia Gatherer's clothes at the lowest tier, Karta Gatherer's clothes at the medium tier and Manas Gatherer's clothes at the highest tier. Their tier and enhancement levels affect how much gathering mastery you gain from them, the higher the better. Enhancement levels are denoted in base, which is no number at all, plus 1, plus 2 and so on until plus 15. Past plus 15, they are called Pry, Duo, Tri, Ted and Pen. How much mastery you get, you can simply read in the item description. For example, a Tri Logia Gatherer's Close will give you 130 extra gathering mastery. The tools are called Logia, Doster and Manus for the different tiers. They also have enhancement levels that work just like the ones before. Note that the gathering mastery from a tool only affects the type of gathering you can do with that tool. For example, a Trilogia hoe will increase your hoe gathering mastery by 130, but it will not affect your butchering mastery or any other types of gathering. Accessories are called Logia, Geranoa and Manos and they work a little different. They give you extra life skill mastery that affects all life skills equally and is not specific to gathering. They also increase the rate at which you gain life experience. This is very nice for people who do a lot of different life skills. To balance out the special effects of accessories, you don't gain as much mastery as you would gain from claws and tools. They also don't have the plus 1 to plus 15 levels, but only base, pry, duo, try, tet and pen. In summary, your gathering mastery is the sum of the masteries you gain from gathering levels and gathering gear. The gathering gear consists of clothes, tools and accessories and is available in 3 different tiers and up to 20 different enhancement levels. And that's a lot of stuff to take in 
and that's why there is an easy to follow gear progression chart by Dmuk. It starts at the lowest stage of gathering gear possible and progresses to better but also more expensive setups. You can enter at any stage as long as your budget allows it and you fulfill the gathering level requirement. Let me know in the comments how you feel about the upcoming gear progression chart. If you are completely new to gathering and to BDO, this is where you start. Get an improved hoe from the material vendor of any town, a full set of Logia accessories at the Logia farm near Velia, and two more items from the central marketplace. A plus two silver embroidered gatherer's clothes and a life spirit stone with a blue border. Except for the Logia accessories, none of these items generate any mastery. This is just a temporary setup to speed up your initial leveling with life experience and drop rate modifiers. The Life Spirit Stone needs to be activated by checking a box in the equipment screen. When it's depleted, you should buy a new one. Grind the old one into powder and put it into your storage. Don't worry about the cost of these stones, they refinance themselves multiple times over in their lifetime and the powder has useful applications later on. Next, once you hit skill 5 gathering, replace the improved hoe by a magic hoe from the central marketplace. The magic hoe is an item that instantly sets your gathering mastery from all your mastery sources combined to an invisible 650. So as long as your mastery is lower than 650, the magic hoe is useful. Once you can reach more than 650 mastery through gathering levels and mastery gear, you should not use the magic hoe anymore. Don't be surprised that the 650 mastery of the magic hoe won't show up in your mastery's overview. That's what I meant by invisible. Next, once you can afford a full set of Trilogia accessories, a Trilogia hoe, a Trilogia gatherer's clothes, and your gathering level is at least at Artisan 3, you can buy these items to reach 650 mastery without relying on the magic hoe. With this setup, the magic hoe won't slow you down anymore and all future mastery gains in intervals of 50 will generate extra income for you. This setup costs around 550 million silver at current market prices in my region, but you should double check the prices on your server. On a fresh character, Artisan 3 takes more than one hour, up to a few hours of gathering herbs to reach, depending on where you are gathering and your life experience buffs. I will show you good place to gather and good buffs soon. In the next picture, all of your Logia is Tet and you're at Master 4, so already past the point where the energy efficiency is maximized. That was at Master 1, remember? If you have an extra 50 contribution points not invested anywhere, you can go to the Northern Wheat Plantation and borrow a late hoe from the node manager Normal Late. The late hoe has the same mastery and gathering item drop rate modifier as a Ted Logia hoe and it gives you an extra 10% gathering experience on top, but 50 CP is a hefty cost, so make sure you don't rely on it in the long term. Next, Ted Carter Gatherer's Close, Tri Manos Hoe, Master 10. Next, Ted Manos Gatherer's Close, Ted Manos Hoe, Master 14. Next, all the Ted Logia accessories have been replaced by Duo Manos accessories. This upgrade is painfully expensive and not very notable in terms of mastery, but eventually you have to make the switch to Manos because Manos scales much better on higher enhancement levels. Your gathering level is now at Master 23. That's where most of the mastery gains come from. Next, try Manos accessories and a Khan's Heart which is an alchemy stone that gives you plus 25 to all life masteries when equipped. The level is at master 28. Next, Pan Manos Tool. It looks out of place, but it's the most cost efficient upgrade here. And Guru 8. Next, Full Tet Manos Accessories. Please buy them, don't enhance Tet. Due to events, people who don't want Tet Manos Accessories regularly get them and sell them to you for cheap. Self-enhancing your own Ted Manos accessories is much more expensive. Also, Guru 16. And done. The gathering level is now at Guru 28 and the Manos close at Pen. Congratulations, you're in the gathering endgame. No Pen Manos accessories are needed to max out your gathering mastery. Now you've seen everything, from total beginner to 2000 mastery endgame gathering gear. 
enter the gathering game at any gear stage that suits your requirements and budget. Note that the gathering levels don't have to scale exactly like shown here. You can power level faster or slower than your gear progression or stop at any point you're comfortable at. Let's talk about buffs quickly. If you press P and look at the battle stats tab, there is an attribute called gathering with five little bars under it. This displays your gathering speed and it absolutely always needs to be maxed out at 5 while you're gathering, which corresponds to 2 seconds gathering time with a fast tool. The fastest way to get there is with an active life spirit stone, a seafood crown meal and by being a member of a guild that has invested into gathering speed as a guild skill. The seafood crown meal is available at the central marketplace, but right now there is an event where you can get it for 1 silver. Ellie, the oasis vendor, is located at the stable keeper of every major town and she is selling it, along with some other good stuff. Joining a guild is pretty straightforward even for solo players. There are lots of guilds that exist for the sole reason of sharing guild bonuses with no duties or requirements. Just ask around on your server chat. If you don't find any guild, you can use Verger Draft to max out your gathering speed. You should be using it while power leveling your gathering anyway for the 20% life experience bonus, but if you're not in a guild, you will have to run the draft even when you're gathering meat or another low experience material. This brings us to the next type of buff, life experience buffs. They are percentage modifiers for faster life experience, including gathering experience, and they add up, meaning they don't multiply. Here is an overview on all of them. Life accessory passives, Seafood Cron Meal and Verger Draft should be active all the time when power leveling. There is a life experience buff and a gathering experience buff that guilds can use once every 4 hours for the duration of 1 hour. It should always be active whenever it's not on cooldown as long as guild members are life skilling. Some other common life experience buffs are available through events or in the pro shop, either through the purchase of permanent items or from consumables. If you're in a hurry, you can buy some of these, but you shouldn't feel pressured about it. You only level your main character to Guru 28 once, so you might as well take your time and enjoy it. If you want to spend money on gathering, the best thing to spend it on is probably a hedgehog pet. Hedgehogs proc the materials you gather, so you end up with more stuff and a slightly faster gathering experience progression. They also come with a life experience modifier. Note that the proc effect is only affected by the tier of your hedgehog, not by how many hedgehogs you own or what color they are, golden or regular. One tier 4 hedgehog is ideal, more are not necessary. You can buy hedgehogs as a part of a bundle or by gifting a game pass to a friend. Aside from the common buffs, there are a few obscure ones listed here. They are the kind of buffs you don't go out looking for, but sometimes they find their way into your inventory during certain events and then you'll know what to do. Two life experience buffs that aren't worth it in my opinion are the Perfume of Swiftness, unless you got it from an event for free, and the Life Skill Mastery Increase Scroll. The perfume is too expensive and the scroll is better spent on cooking or alchemy. On the Black Desert anniversary and on your Black Desert birthday, so each year on the day on which you first signed up, you will get a birthday cake. The cake has a 100% combat, skill and life experience buff that lasts for 24 hours and it's best spent on life skills. If you choose to spend it on gathering, make sure to have some event or pro shop energy potions stacked up and a fallback option for when you run out of energy, like alchemy, trading, bartering or horse taming for example. You don't have to stay awake for 24 hours to make the optimal use of the buff, you can just AFK overnight on a different character and won't lose any cake time on your life skilling main. Speaking of energy, there are ways to refill energy faster. Every 10 minutes, you can pop an energy potion XL to refill 50 energy. You can get the potions from the central marketplace for up to 5 million silver, or by manifesting them for the price of 200 energy at Alustin the Alchemist. A good way of getting more of them over time is to simply create alt characters and doing the exchange at Alistin as soon as they have 200 energy to spare. Energy potions that are smaller than XL are not worth it. When you are power leveling, you should be popping the XL ones as soon as the cooldown ends, no matter how expensive it may seem. 
traveling back and forth all the time would only end up being more expensive anyway, because you're not making any silver while traveling. So you might as well extend the time you spend at a power leveling location as much as possible and only head home when you're completely drained, zero energy. The game has event or pro shop potions that work exactly like energy potions XL, but they don't share the same cooldown. This allows you to pop them in alteration with the regular ones, extending your gathering session for much longer. The event version of the potion stacks up over time in your black spirit safe, just hoard them and take them out when you plan a big gathering session. If you want to spend real money on per shop potions, do it on a Monday when they are on discount or when there is a flash sale. The blessing on Kama Sylph is a per shop item that increases your energy regeneration by plus two. The Turning Gates buff from the Pearl Tent adds another plus one to your energy regeneration. And if you get your hands on AGM's Blessing from an event, you have access to another plus one energy regeneration. These regeneration rates get added on top of your regular regeneration, which is plus one energy once every three minutes on the character you're playing on. There is also some obscure houseplant that adds plus one re regeneration, but we don't see that one very often. Lastly, you can go to the Red Battlefield once a day to regenerate 200 energy through a daily quest. That quest requires you to win at the Red Battlefield once or lose a few times in a row. Please fight actively and do your best to support your team. Now, it is finally time to reveal my favorite power leveling spot, the Serene Spring. I'm starting at the Heidel Gateway, which is the passage between the south of Veli and the north of Heidel. I'm going to scroll to the top right of my map and right click a certain tree on the little island here to set the navigation. If you have not met all node managers in the surrounding areas yet, pay close attention to my mini map in the top right corner and mimic my movements. I wouldn't go out of my way to show you how I get there if I didn't believe the place was seriously chaotic and difficult to navigate. Actually, tell me in the comments how long it took you to find the precise location where my rotation begins. An optimized rotation is super important in this place. If you don't know what you're doing and you're just running around aimlessly towards whatever plant that looks like it might be a gatherable herb, you're going to get lost and this won't feel like a valid alternative to bear at all. I hope you got your gathering gear and bus ready and there's some room in your inventory for the herbs. I like to park my horse at this little island surrounded by the creek. Directly behind the horse, there is a good spot to set up the tent. And then I cross the creek to the north and go to the aloe plant. This is where the rotation starts. Before we go into the details of the rotation, I want to teach you how to gather from a distance. You can learn this in a matter of minutes and it will save you a lot of travel time over your lifetime of playing video. The earlier you learn it, the better. First, we have to access the settings and search for mouse. It says, use mouse to move here. Click that setting and make sure it's turned on. Next, look at my screen. See how the mouse cursor is appearing and disappearing whenever I press control? It's important that you memorize you can bring back the cursor anytime you hit control if it disappears for whatever reason. Actually, when you move your character, the cursor tends to disappear. So we need the cursor to stay visible at all times, and this is why we have to press control as soon as we are finished moving. I'm now going to move the cursor to a gatherable resource and right click it. A circle will appear above it. When I press R, my character starts gathering. While she is gathering, I'm moving my cursor over to the next gatherable resource and right click again. When she is done gathering the first resource, I press R to pick up the materials. Then I press R again and she will start gathering the second resource where my cursor is at. This process is very fluent and time saving. I repeat it for all the gatherable resources around me until I have to move. Once I'm in position to gather the next plants, I have to bring back my cursor by pressing control. There I repeat the distance gathering and that is really all there is to it. The hardest part about distance gathering is getting a feeling for the maximum reach but that comes naturally with practice. Now it's time to show you my 52 herbs rotation. I put some labels over it to make sure all the herbs are easy to see so you don't miss a single one. 
The downside of the Serene Spring is that there are some plants that look like gatherable herbs, but they aren't actually gatherable. But I'm sure that, with the help of this video, you're going to figure it out in no time and this location will become a true alternative to Bear, the most popular power leveling spot right now. On a side note, at the pond north of herb number 12, you can find some truffles. They are valuable and nice gathering experience, so go and grab them if you like. They have a long respawn time, so you have to swap service if you want to harvest them regularly. The longer you gather at the Serene Spring, the heavier and the fuller your inventory gets. There are two trade item beetles that are very heavy. You can stack the one that drops more often on your horse. If the horse tells you it's overweight, move the beetles that were already on the horse into your inventory and then put the full stack of beetles back onto the horse. You can overload the horse by a significant factor this way. This also works for other items like trash loot from mobs or cooking ingredients. If your inventory is full of seeds, you can delete them or sell them to an NPC vendor. Better don't list them on the central market, they take forever to sell. If your inventory is hopelessly full, head back to Velia and unload it and return. It doesn't take longer than a few minutes. Gathering herbs drops a few Kafra stones, ancient spirit dust, hearts, sharps and black gem fragments. Other rare drops from herbs include various fruits that sell on the marketplace for a decent amount of silver. You can also do alchemy with them. However, as we have seen in the gatherable materials overview, the silver from herbs is not quite comparable to the money you make through other forms of gathering, except tanning maybe. Something I like about the 52 herbs rotation is that the herbs tend to grow back right when you complete a loop. It is very satisfying and feeling like the herbs are growing just for you. Now you know everything I know about power leveling gathering. The only thing that still sets us apart is that I already did it all the way to Guru 28 and if you're watching this video, chances are that you haven't done it yet. But with this information, you can do it too. Be resilient, patient and full of faith. Put a good series on your second screen and enjoy the power leveling. You'll miss it sooner than you think. I hope that this video has helped you on your journey. It was actually crazy difficult and time consuming to make and I spent more money on editing than I should have. Please leave me an upvote and a comment. If you'd like to support my channel, you can find my PayPal email address in the description below. I'm actually planning on making a lot more content. I will continue the gathering series, make guides for other aspects of the game, do a big enhancing livestream and get into PvP. If you want us to experience our journey through BDO together, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. If you have any questions, I will try to answer them to the best of my abilities. If you know the answer to someone else's question, please join the discussion. Until next time, happy gathering, keep your buffs active and your hedgehog fed, and say hi to the aloe plant for me.